A very good evening to you and welcome to RTV News with me, Fiona Mbawaz. And of course, I'll be joined by my guest, Anka Gabiro Gitaman. Now, the First Lady, Mrs. Janet Kagame, who is also the chairperson of Unity Club in Mwararomori, attended the club's annual general assembly and the annual retreat held at Inare Arena. The Unity Club is an association that brings together current and former government leaders and their spouses to promote unity and social cohesion. This Saturday, the club will celebrate its 25th anniversary under the theme Ndubunyar Gwanda, the foundation of our national identity. The 25th anniversary on Saturday coincides with the Unity Club's 14th annual forum, which started today with the annual retreat. During today's General Assembly, Unity Club members elected new executive committee and is led by Honorable Solange Kaisire as the first vice chairperson and Mrs. Julienne Wachu as the second vice chairperson. To business matters, now Rwanda Utilities Regulatory Authority, Aurora, has announced new fuel prices. The price of petrol in Kigali should and will not exceed 1,143 Rwandan francs per litre, while the price of diesel in Kigali should not exceed and will not exceed 1,054 per litre. Now, Rura says these prices are due to take effect on the 16th of November until the 14th of December this year. In an interview with Anison Sabimana, the Director General of Rura, he said that the Rwandan government subsidized the cost of fuel for going the import tax so that the sharp rise in prices of fuel on the international market does not disrupt the general prices of basic goods. Diesel price increased by 80 Rwandan francs per litre, which is about 7% increase. The government took the decision to give up the taxes on the fuel to keep the prices stable until December 14th. All petrol prices increased by 110 Rwandan francs per litre, which is about 10% increase compared to the current price. The government gave up about 55 Rwandan francs on the new petrol prices. Now, the Minister of Infrastructure, Ambassador Kleva Gatete, explains why for the fuel the government has imposed a 100% subsidy for diesel and 50% for petrol. Diesel is used for different services, including in public transport, cargo transport. You will find that in fuel consumption, about 70% of the motor vehicles consume fuel. The subsidization is important because it helps cargo transporters, but also keeps commodity prices affordable. It also keeps transport fares stable. The government gave up about 29 billion Rwandan francs of revenues to keep fuel prices stable, but also ensuring that fuel dealers do not incur losses. After May 2021, fuel prices on the international market kept increasing due to the shortage of fuel on the market. From that time, the government gave up taxes on fuel to keep the prices stable, which was to help the economy stay afloat. The prices have since remained stable, but the government had already invested about 7 billion Ronan francs to subsidize fuel. But now that the economy is recovering, fuel prices have again shoot up. As explained by the Director General of Rura, diesel prices increased by 80 Ronan francs per litre, while petrol increased by 110 Ronan francs per litre. But the fact that diesel is widely used that's why the government decided to continue subsidizing it by 100% while subsidizing petrol by 50% to support everyone as the country continues to recover without disrupting the livelihood of the people. Two environmental matters now, the Minister of Environment, Dr. Mujao Maria Jeanne d'Arc, has said that the preservation of the environment, especially the ozone layer, requires no financial means but the will of the people. Now, this was mentioned during the five-year celebration of the Kigali Amendment to the Montreal Protocol. Derek Mohangi with the details. A cross-section of Kigali City residents appreciate the fact that much has been done on saving the environment and preserving the Kigali City Master Plan. It has been five years since Kigali signed the ratified amendment to the Montel Protocol. The Kigali Amendment is an international agreement to gradually reduce the consumption and the production of hydrofluorocarbons. It is a legally binding agreement designed to create rights and obligations in international law. We have typically very established industries uh, and very established sources of development, sources of energy and so on. Um, and so when, uh, you know, the need to move in this new direction 
uh, comes up, it obviously challenges those established practices, energy uh, uh, sources of development and energy and so on. As you are in the course of developing, and I mean Rwanda is a country that is on a course of development and industrialization, you know, uh, navigating those issues, I think, has been a particular challenge, you know, facing the global community. Well, let me uh, congratulate Rwanda for really being at the forefront and leading um, important initiative to tackle climate change. And I'm happy to see that the name of the beautiful city of Kigali is now attached to the amendment of this Montreal Protocol on reducing the carbon fluoro hydro um, chloro carbon, which is uh, this one. And uh, Rwanda is ahead of the curve. The Ministry of Environment says though Rwanda engaged itself in the amendments to the Montreal Protocol, the country still has a long way to go. Ratifying and implementing the Kigali Amendment we are renewing our commitment mm -hmm. to adapt to climate change and to adapt to climate challenges. For us, it's now time, after five years, to sit together, to devise methodology and technology, how we can work together for the common cause, which is our home our common home. Rwanda says if all the countries can respect the amendment to reduce the consumption and production of hydrofluorocarbons, this can play a role in reducing the temperature measurements in air that are equivalent to 80 billion tons of carbon dioxide until the year 2050. In the year 2100, it's predicted that temperature atmosphere will be reduced to a level of 105 million tons, which will eventually reduce the 0.4 degrees Celsius of the world's temperatures. Derek Muhanji reporting for RTV. Well, thank you, Derek, for that story. Now, today is Global Hand Washing Day. Yes, a day you would, you know, expect it to be common, but hand washing is not as common as we believe because according to the latest estimates from the World Health Organization and UNICEF, three in ten people worldwide cannot wash with soap and water at home and at current rates of progress 1.9 billion people and families and children worldwide worldwide rather will still be unable to do so by 2030 of course now we are joined by olutayo bankole bolowale he, he is the regional director of the water aid in east africa to explain more to us good evening to you and thank you so much for joining us olutayo Good evening. Uh, please call me Tayo. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Tayo. So why is it important for us to, you know, in this time and day to wash our hands? Hmm. Maybe I need to talk a little bit about who we are. What I did is an international NGO that um, works with others to make clean water, decent toilets and good hygiene normal for everybody everywhere within a generation. Uh, as an international NGO, our role is really to change lives of people that are the poorest and most marginalized uh, people of the world and provide such services for WASH. And we've been doing this since um, 1981. Now to answer your question very, very briefly, I think um, why it's important for us to wash our hands with soap and water is because we can see especially when we look at the current situation around the pandemic, that it has been proven that washing hands with soap and water is one of the world's most effective defenses against antimicrobial resistance, preventable diseases, pandemics that we have now, and the future pandemics that we know may also come. And as of now, when we're looking at the current rates, by 2030, when the SDGs are supposed to have been met, 1.9 billion people still won't be able to wash their hands at home. So definitely washing hands is not negotiable. Uh, the other one that I would like to say again that helps is as we continue to invest in soap and water as a clear no regret investment, whether it's at home, healthcare facilities, schools and public places, we will see very clearly that COVID-19 recovery and the preparedness for uh, future pandemics cannot happen without this.
One of the things that we're also clear about is that smart choices by governments could really play a vital role in ensuring a prosperous future, healthier population, and a functioning society for uh, our people in Africa and beyond. Thank you. Absolutely, Tayo. Now, around 290,000, you know, uh, children under five die every year of diarrhea, you know, diseases caused by poor water and sanitation, and more than 800 children a day, or at least a child every two minutes dies because of How can we change this in this, you know, in, it's now 2021, we shouldn't be dying of such diseases? Exactly. I completely agree with you. I think the first thing we must realize is that it is all about behavior change, hygiene behavior change. It starts with each person one on one. And when you look at it from those um, perspectives, you know that nothing can happen unless it starts with a change individually from our people ourselves. Secondly, uh, one of the things that is also very clear is that we need to invest more in WASH. When I say WASH, I mean water sanitation and hygiene mm -hmm. at the home front. Because if we don't do that, all these diseases that are killing children unnecessarily is due to the lack of clean water and soap, even at the home front. Mm -hmm. Healthcare facilities, I'm talking about hospitals, clinics, and the rest of them, without having WASH services within them, schools and all those places, we will continue to struggle. So one of the things that we can then do is to invest more, whether it is uh, by investing in ourselves to learn more, to know more, or our investment in finances and putting monies there uh, from private sector, from donors and from government. One of the clear things also that I would want to point out is that governments of low and medium income countries need to begin to kickstart intensify or scale up campaigns that they have around hygiene behavior change by ensuring that washing and washing with clean water and soap, setting up very clear roadmaps to achieve hand hygiene for everybody by 2030 and fencing the finances to make this happen is a crucial one. And maybe I would also add that we believe that a very urgent attention is required so that millions can be saved from unnecessary deaths. Just like you mentioned, a lot of deaths happen in us, maternal mortality, child mortality, some of it actually starting sometimes from our healthcare facilities because of the lack of effective clean water and soap for them to wash their hands, even as they treat patients. So for me, I think to protect ourselves against future pandemics, unlock economic growth because the more the people are comfortable and alive and well, the more they're able to function and work and the more they're able to then have uh, finances and, and economic growth in their own lives and the lives of the country. The other one that also I think I want to bring into this is that we have realized that the base, provision of basic um, water services can save women and girls an equivalent of about 77 million working days per year. Because right now, when we look at the stats, that the statistics, it really shows that women and girls are spending about all those hours in fetching water, increasing their life and work options, and then definitely uh, uh, contributing to gender equality if they are able to have all these services closed at home. And one of the things that we have also proven and seen in so many researches that what it has conducted and others has been around the fact that good hygiene can reduce diarrhea and respiratory diseases at low cost, improving people's health, reducing the cost of healthcare, and freeing people's productive time all of the time. This has been things and, uh, and research that has proven all of this. Now I want to bring it home to you. Just imagine, just think about it. That 10 days of global smartphone sales revenue, which is around 11 billion USD, would actually cover the cost of ensuring that the world's poorest can wash their hands at home with soap and water by 2030. Imagine that, just 10 days. So you see that it is really about political will. It's really about our people themselves realizing that this is not a big deal. What do we need to do is realizing that donors and other key stakeholders have a lot to do to see that it is not much. It's just about the will to make this happen. Mm. So I'll stop there. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much, Tai, you know, for giving us a very clear, you know, understanding to what it holds to say, you know, it is important to wash our hands because some things we take for granted, not knowing the importance of all this. Thank you so much and have a good evening.
Thank you. For the matters now, parents and guardians in Rusizi district that have children in primary and secondary schools have expressed their gratitude towards the government of Rwanda that has put in effort in building more classrooms. At Temple Secondary School in Wagarama sector, students are taking their lunch at school. Except enjoying the meal, they also appreciate the fact that they no longer face challenges such as going back home to take lunch. When we eat from school, it helps us to study well, because when I take lunch from here, I'm able to attend evening classes while I'm not hungry. We really get enough meal and get full. You can't understand. Most of the times, we come from poor families. We may reach home and find no food, but here at school, we are able to eat and proceed with classes. You would find problems at home while going for lunch and then do not return to school or else find other responsibilities that could delay you from the evening classes. 754 classrooms are being built in Rosizi district, with having 88 of them that are in storage buildings. Different schools officials in Rosizi district say they are getting positive results since the district started constructing classrooms. This program of building classrooms has already shown its productivity. We had 90 students in class and we are now having 45 to 50 students. Before building them, we used to have unclassified division in senior six finalists, but none of the primary students got such division since they implemented this program. It was hard for a teacher to teach. It was hard for a teacher to teach many students at once, and I think school feeding program is a solution towards the victory. Due to the effort that has been put in this program implementation, 94% of the classrooms have been built in Rusizi District. The Vice Mayor in charge of Social Affairs in Rusizi District, Emmanuel Sigaye, assures that classrooms construction program will be fully implemented in two weeks to come. We had an overcrowding problem in class where you would even find 120 students in one class, but it has really reduced. It's now 45 to 50 students in class. We had old classrooms. We solved that. We are finishing the rest of the classrooms, and we believe they will be done in two weeks. Overcrowding in schools, having no school feeding program, and other related concerns have always been mentioned as hindrances to quality education. However, receives officials have assured that all the issues will be solved. Now, China annually deploys 15 Chinese doctors to the country that contributes to us treating virus, uh, various diseases. Some of the Rwandan doctors working with the Chinese doctors say that the collaboration gives them the opportunity to learn from each other. This is one of the patients receiving treatment from one of the Chinese doctors at Masaka Hospital in Kichichura District. I could not walk, I could not walk or sit up like I can now. I could feel okay during the day, however during the night I feel sick. I came here and they told me that the treatment will run through five days. The Chinese medical team has been deployed to Masaka and Chibungo Hospital to partner with Rwandan doctors to treat various cases that include dental care, perform orthopedic surgery, abdominal tumors, and more. The Rwandan doctors working with the Chinese doctors said there is a gap that can be filled by the Chinese medical team and that they can help the Rwandan doctors to improve their capacity. What we learned from them is on how to treat various diseases that we did not use to treat at this district hospital, like performing orthopedic surgery. Out of four patients that we receive in a week that have been involved in accidents, we can treat two of those patients. This helps other hospitals that need to transfer their patients here, which in turn improves our knowledge on this matter. The Director General of Masaka Hospital affirms that the collaboration between Masaka Hospital and the Chinese doctors is very productive. This is seen through the numbers of patients the hospital receives on a daily basis. The benefit on our side is indeed massive and they treat the general public from across the country, especially those in need of orthopedic, surgery and dental care. They also train a few of our graduate students here at the hospital. Last year, 
They trained 10 interns, but we had also 14 doctors who were already practicing and still could use some training. It is an advantage to have them here with us. In the last four years, China has deployed at least 258 medical specialists to Rwanda. These doctors from China say that despite the language barriers, it does not prevent them from doing their job. They do hope to increase the number of Chinese doctors coming into the country. Dr. Wu Yao is one of the 15 doctors who have been in Rwanda for almost a year. I said in the future we, we want to expand and increase. Now we are discussing with the Ministry of Health about uh, increasing the departments of medical team according to the hospital needs. Mm. We will, in the future, we will increase in the departments, not more than 15. The health cooperation between China and Rwanda has increasingly intensified in the recent years. Masako Hospital was built with the support of the Chinese government, costing over 10 billion Rwandan francs. In November, Rwanda and China will celebrate 50 years of cooperation in various fields. Gabi Muvonyi, reporting for RTV News. Welcome back on the news. I'm Gabriel Guitar and I'm your news anchor today. So on the international scene, a British MP was stabbed at his office in the county of London. So it is understood that, that David Ames, a conservative, is receiving treatment at the scene. He was attacked on Friday afternoon at Belfast Methodist Church at the Lake Rail on the oceans in the South Essex. Police said a man was has been a man has been arrested. Mm -hmm. Put your arms around me, oh yeah, take me there. No po 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 po. Gabriel, thank you so much for being time with me. This evening. Thank you for having me. How was the experience being hey, a guest hey, hey, tonight? You know, you know, at school I've always been, you know, one of the. Uh, I've always been an awesome. Guy, uh -huh. but you know, I've just failed <laughs> this time around. Eh? But, hey, <laughs> you guys go through things, mm. and I, I know it's, it's your gift. Yeah. As if I, I also have my gift, yeah, absolutely. But let me tell you, this is quite a crazy experience. I've experienced something in a little bit of time, <laughs> I can never tell that. <laughs> well, I'm glad you did, Gaviro. What, what, so what are your full names? My real names are Gabriel Gilbert, mm. but I always go by the name of Gabriel Guitar as a musician mm -hmm. for the artistry. Absolutely. So when did you know that you have this talent? You you know, did you start when you're a young boy or you just, you know, as an adult? You know, I started early. Mm. I was I always go to the Sunday schools and you know, all those choirs from way back mm. as a child. So grow, growing up in a Christian family has also helped. Because I went through a lot of choirs, like I went from the Sunday school. Mm. Well, uh, hasn't been easy. Like, for, like by the time I was in Tasca Project Fame, mm. it, it's, it's as if like I was, it, I was it, it, like it kicked off like on the higher note. Yeah, absolutely. So like when I when I when I had to you know when I get to come back to Pigari and still push on my music. So it wasn't really on a balance. Mm. Like from what I've met in this music industry, mm, mm. even from also what I've been through, the Tasca project mm. things was a little bit unbalanced. Mm. So I had to also come back and, you know, start from fresh. Because mm. I also I had nothing like as in as in as a Art, as a music, I had nothing. Like mm. I, have, I haven't, I had not recorded anything That's true. ever since. So I had to come back and you know start fresh, mm. be able to mingle and you know be part of this competition. You know, Gabiro, your music seems to be evolving. You know, every other time. You know, yeah, sure. one, you know, from R and B, slow music, you know, to trying to all this. Exactly. Yeah. So where are you? What's what? You know, where are you? What? What's what's the five-year plan for you, for yourself, because you know we like have even for, this song. For, like uh, starting from now, as in picking it from now. Yeah, uh, I'm more about what's selling. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, like, like from way back, like from uh, some years back, <laughs> I've been I've been singing something. Like I've been very soul, mm. and also what really touched me as a musician. Something mm, mm. It, it was really 
I've been producing some original songs, those songs that I've written, yeah. but now I'm more about what's trending, I'm more about what's trending. What's trending? More about what's really <laughs> getting people moving. So, I, as in, I can say that I still have a long way to go, mm. but you know, I'm, 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 I'm also grateful for where I'm at. Absolutely. I'm as we sum up, you know, to up, upcoming musicians, what would be your advice to, you know, to them as they try to follow in your lead? Uh, as in, for, for those upcoming artists, they should also follow our lead because we, we've been fighting this before internet, before mm. anything, but we've been pushing passionately. Mm. So they, they need to trust the journey because the future belongs to them. Mm. For us, we just we are still struggling. Like mm. we are coming from those analog <laughs> period to digital, to digital stuff. So, yeah. But I can say that we have, we have been able. We have been we have been very glad to serve. Mm. So we are we are giving. As in, we are still giving. Mm. So they, they should not they should not worry. They should not give up. Absolutely. So they 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 still a long way to go, but they will get there. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much, them. David, for making time. Thank you for having me. It was great. Experience. Well, thank you to our viewers, of course, who have been with us throughout. Thank you very much for joining us. My name is Fiona Babazi, of course, as usual. Have yourselves a blessed and a fruitful weekend ahead. Remember to keep safe and remember that COVID is still here with us. So you have a role to play to protect yourself and those around you. Enjoy the rest of our programming. Good night.